Hello. Hello. Well, all right, we are back. This is the Healing Chefs podcast. I am Ryan, aka Crowns and Corner, uh, co host Hollywood Betty. How we doing? All right. Good, good. <laughs> Sorry. It's always we. We're always uh, good. On, uh, um, my brain's on a little bit of a delay. Uh, but yeah, so Healing Chefs, uh, all about um, healing, obviously. And then Chef, Chef coming from the word uh, chief, chief meaning leader, uh, leader. Uh, everybody that we have on here, I believe, is a leader in their own way. Um, today's chef is Yattering, the homie. What up, guys? All mm-hmm. right. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. It is a warm mm-hmm. one out there. Arizona summer, hot one. Yeah, it's right. nice as fuck out there. Yeah. Cliche, try to stay cool out there, everybody. Uh, it's almost <laughs> impossible. <laughs> My AC even went out this week. But anyway, I'm um, just trying to put this link up there for the live people real quick. And... Uh, Let's see. Boom. Pow, pow. All right. If you guys are on the IG, you can check it out right there. All right. Thank you very much. And before we get into any of this segments, can you explain to the people like what you do right now? Um, then we'll get into the like, personal journey of things. Again, I'm Yattering. That's my handle. That's why I go by. I make music. I make hip hop music, local artists out here in Arizona. I like to infuse like a lot of like metal into my stuff. So I do a lot of like screaming. I make a lot of like angry music and shit. Other than that, I work in the cannabis industry. I am a bud tender. So you might see me out there. Hell yeah. yeah, we used to work together um, at a couple different places. All right. So calming. Yeah, that, that is kinda, actually nice. Think, yeah, I like I, your intro too. To be honest, when I started up, I was like, "Yeah, this is fucking sick." Like it brought me back <laughs> when I was like a kid and I went to the fucking movies. Yes. I love movies. Like, I love all that shit. I have nostalgia, a lot of, like pulp, like references into my songs and shit like that. But yeah, hell yeah, I really appreciate that because that's exactly what I want to keep doing is putting those '80s, '90s references and 2000s now. That's like, the shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just the fun stuff that we like. Just some nostalgia, a little bit bringing it back and then also we can put our weed stuff on it <laughs> i like that infuse it's, it a bit it'll work until like maybe we get really popular and then they'll be like if you don't take that down don't <laughs> honestly do some of the copyright laws might be falling now it might be yeah. old yeah you can always look into that mm, yeah <laughs> we'll just say no the ai made that <laughs> yeah that's, true. that's so funny the ai made that the cannabis journey though is all about how you found cannabis yourself and where you're at with it now for sure we're all have like every option available now but yeah you know, right. like people want to know like how you started what did you start with like joint stuff you know um well obviously like when i st- well i guess it's not obvious but when i started it was definitely like not legal i started smoking weed when i was a kid uh, the first time i actually like ever smoked weed it wasn't like really a good experience i smoked with some friends that had like a joint <laughs> and i had like a fucking baseball game like before then so like when i took a hit it just slowed everything way down like, when i was trying to eat it made everything like i got the food that i was trying to like fucking eat like it was like going down like really fucking slow and That's shit crazy. And I was, you're fucking like you're weird baseball fuck. right i was like first yo <laughs> at first like thinking about it like the experience i had like you were in the matrix after that before like, the matrix right the I, was trying, just... I was trying to break out and i couldn't break out man i was like <laughs> i was like sucked into the corporate world of living i was like i got a baseball game on my parents are gonna be disappointed in yeah. me and shit oh god I was like, give me the steak <laughs> Give me this. <laughs> I gotta eat our earth that fucking brings you down. <laughs> I know this isn't really here, but it's great. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. That's crazy. Yeah. But uh yeah, no, after that I smoked again years later and fucking enjoyed the experience. I was with some friends. We fucking went into this tunnel uh down the way where we lived and shit, the canals and fucking smoked down there, and that was fucking awesome. I didn't even realize I was like high until I five bowls in i just kind of like because we just kept smoking and i looked up and i was like fuck until the the clown came out and said we all float down (laughs) yeah that wouldn't be good (laughs) hey guys let's go hang out in the tunnel (laughs) oh man when we were kids i know the shit that we would do just to be able to get high and like or not even that just feel like we don't want to get caught by our parents or be judged and shit like that and i remember too like after we did it the whole like just aspect of like people believing we're high. Like I thought anyone would fucking like, call the cops on me, dude. Like all these fucking kids are. They stone, just man. know. Like, we went into this fucking gas station. And we're all like, 
fucking cover your eyes with your hair real quick and <laughs> i just got a fucking haircut so my fucking my hair was short as fuck and i'm like i i can't do shit and we fucking He's we got like, our drink <laughs> trying to lean up <laughs> i'm trying to like look down i'm like hey. <laughs> fucking uh but Me, we're I walking should. out and fucking one of my buddies just like we fucking we did it troops i'm just like man we haven't even left the store yet dude. <laughs> like we're fucking in the store that's hilarious <laughs> Oh my god! That was that was like my first actual experience being high, and then that's kind of how I got into it. And it just kind of turned into like a weekend thing. Wouldn't be able to do it a lot. I didn't like doing it like at my mom's house. I know that she, like my mom, even still to this day, with it being like legal and like mm-hmm. me having like my medical card and me working in the industry and like me explaining every medical aspect that I've been able to like learn about it and like. She's just like, it's a fucking drug. She's like, get yeah. away from me. Uh, I'll bring like EBD to like for the dogs and shit. And she'll be like, don't fucking give my yeah. my dogs any of those drugs, man. I'm just like, chill out, dude. Like, it's fine. Like, yeah. But then when her like, dogs go into heat and shit like that, or, or my dogs are into heat and we fucking go up there and shit, she'll be like, oh, fucking, did you bring that CBD? I'm just like, so. it's only when you want them to have the drugs. It's okay. That That's also the government. You can't have it. But if we need it. That's it. Yeah. That part. <laughs> yeah, bro, that's like the whole idea of it. Yeah. It's only mm-hmm. taboo until I say it's not. Yeah. Until, until I need it. And then, so you're bud tended now. So I got into the industry. So I actually stopped smoking weed and drinking for about like for a couple of years. And then I wanted to get back into smoking weed because <laughs> I had a bunch of mean? like medical issues going on. Mm-hmm. And uh, come to find out, like I had like an autoimmune uh, gut problems and sh- shit like that, like GERD and gastritis and shit like that. And my body just doesn't create the, the blood cells to be able to like pair it. And with all of that, I went to a doctor and the doctor actually recommended, she was like, why don't you, the like weed doctor that I went and saw, she told me to go to the gastro doctor. And so when I went and was like talking to this weed doctor and shit like that about getting my medical card, cause I wanted to start smoking again, but I wanted to do it legally. I didn't yeah. want to get caught up in shit like that. Cause I was you know, fucking like 20 years old and shit. I was like, I yeah. don't want to, I don't want to go to fucking jail or like whatever the it's fuck. It's weird you know? out here. Yeah. It's just the whole thing. The fact that it could be a felony and everything. It's just like the whole concept of it, how people you can have a medical even, card. Even and... now it's, it's, yeah. it's fucked up dude, but um, how uh, cops are with it now and shit like that. But it's, but so anyways, I got my fucking card. And so the girl that I was trying to get my card from, she told me to go to a gastro doctor. And that just made me have a lot of respect for like medical, like the the weed doctors out here. Okay. A lot of people don't see them as actual doctors, but this girl sat down with me and took the time to go through like fucking medical records and was be like, yo, this is what I think's going on. And mm-hmm. I was going to like doctors for like two years trying to figure out what was happening with my body and shit like that. Cause I had like, I was 170 pounds and I went to 208 pounds in a fucking month. And then within six months, I started losing weight and I went to 135 pounds. And I even had people thinking that I was like, I mean, like serious drugs, like meth and cocaine and shit like that. Mm -hmm. But no, I was just fuck. I wasn't even fucking drinking. That's when I was like, fuck, I'm just going to start smoking weed and shit like that. Got all that, got to the gastro doctor, figured out the shit. But yeah, so then I started really trying to pay attention to what I was smoking and shit like that, trying to get knowledge. And that didn't happen until I went into cannabis industry. I feel like there's a big... There's a big like wall, like a curtain, I would say, like, between what you when you're not in the cannabis industry and like you know when you're in the cannabis industry. Like, if you're not taking the time yourself to really start doing this like, digging and trying to learn the science behind it, then you're never gonna know because there's so many people that even work in the in the industry and they don't even know like, what goes into a fucking timeless cartridge or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, because yeah. like I like I every once in a while I hit up a dispensary and it was just that one. And there's no way like, patients can can get a proper proper service because it's so rushed. Oh, yeah. No matter where you go, because there's going to be a line and stuff, and you just can't. This is supposed to be something that you know, we all talk about and help each other. And it, it's it feels like you have about five minutes to pick whatever the hell you want and yeah. like get the hell out of there. When it, it used to be that way, well, like when it was just medical, we used yeah. to. I used to be able to have more time to spend with people and talk with them yeah, about that. But that. then when it was wreck, it turned into like. We can consult, but like really only try to consult like medical people. And there's like a lot of rec people that come in. They're old and they do have like ailments going on and they don't want to buy like a $300 card to like smoke medically. And then so they're like, right. ah, I'm trying to help you, but I got to be quick as hell. Yeah, here's this brochure. <laughs> right. And then the, then constantly, um, at least in our market, Arizona, uh, there's constantly new uh, cart uh, brands, new pre-roll brands, new 
all sorts yeah. of different byproducts and we don't even know where the flowers or the the, the products that they're putting into these things are coming from yeah, well, yeah where Which, they're being cultivated from yeah, and stuff like that i guess maybe we can look it up with some of this stuff but i think it it only tells you like the where yeah, that just company the just source. turned it in yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. what so, the what the co- company is like licensed. licensed under or whatnot right yeah. right right so, I'm, I'm i'm hoping for more transparency in the future i just don't know if that's a marketing thing that they're going to be able to do you know. yeah well a lot of it goes into marketing too like when you're when it's with when it goes into brands and stuff like that and products that we sell a lot of it is like marketing and well because different like, cartridges and different things like that can even be just trim, trim oh, yeah. Run, oh yeah of, trim of course run. that's what it is and yeah. that's what i mean that's what distal it is most people when they buy like a biscotti distal cartridge they actually think it's like biscotti the strain and it's not like it's just whatever type of THC water they're able to get from like trim and all of the shit that they have like byproduct mm-hmm. basically like when it, it is I know a lot of people say like it's like hot dog water and I was like ah it's not like the best thing to kind of compare it to but then when you really think about how it's made it is it's all the leftover stuff that you have from like trimming the nugs or doing anything else what they do is they take all of that garbage and they basically flood it with alcohol or whatever the hell else like ethanine in their Butane. butane and they're getting the fucking thc from it. and that's all they're focusing on getting from it when you're doing that you're destroying the flower and you're not getting the, the proper terpenes from it you're not getting the proper other cannabinoids from it that you need to be able to feel that high to make it more more medical thc to me isn't really that it really isn't that medicinal it binds to the b1 receptor changes cognitive function gets you high if you eat thc it can help change the microbiomes in your gut so that helps but like THC without the the terpenes, the myrcene, paraphylene, the limonene, all that stuff, it doesn't really do a whole lot. You need all of that stuff to be able to bind to other receptors so it can mm-hmm. start helping your body and telling your body what it needs. And then CBD and CBG and all these other cannabinoids, they bind with our endocannabinoid system to be able to help us. And so that's what a lot of people I feel like that's what I try to focus on whenever I try to help people is, is explaining these things to them. Cause I think that's, what's important. Taraj effect. Yeah, I, I definitely, because we're trying to create natural uh, cures to natural I- issues and whatnot. And, and what they do with a lot of these different things, not this, but this is a uh, hello live resin, by the way, I keep smoking this cause I like it, but <laughs> so, so in a lot of those, what they do is after that is they see or see it because it's like dark or they, they what yeah. CRC is color remediation uh, column mm-hmm. where they scrub it and make it lighter and whatnot. With that, though, what happens is there's only so so little molecules can get through or whatnot through their filtering system, and the terpenes that only make it through are like it's it's like the limonene or something. There's only like I have to look it up, but yeah. there's only like a couple that make it through, and that's why all CRC tastes like the same. Oh yeah, just taste. Yeah. Just tastes like. Pretty sure this is weed. Yeah, pretty sure this. <laughs> it's an essential oil it at that point. Yeah, it's, it's more botanical. Me, like, yeah, yeah, like they got something. They got. <laughs> they got not this. Be, be, to be clear, uh, they like they got something out of like the ditch, like ditch weed, and ran that. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah. This tastes like sour. <laughs> like, this, well, not that did you run, too, Is this asparagus OG? <laughs> and it really sucks when your fucking shit does taste like that. Yeah. Right. It sucks. Right. It really sucks. But now we're up to like. Uh, Live hash resin and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that shit's nice. That's lovely. No solvents ever. Oh, yeah. And then know. there's better devices to be able to smoke your stuff with too. Like if you don't know how to properly use like a torch and a fucking banger, then you know, there's puff yeah. codes out I bring there the puff code and focus sometimes. and whatnot. Yeah. I wanted to bring mine so bad I fucking forgot it. We're stoners. That's a stoner really thing to do, dude. I, <laughs> I use it right before I was I'm supposed to pack it. To be <laughs> I, uh, I did clean my last night too. Oh, I forget. I forget stuff all the time on the way. <laughs> it's it's yeah. but it is pretty life changing for sure like i mean just getting into that area you know, rosin and and stuff that you want to actually put some time into smoking because it, the cost is there too uh, you know, it's definitely yeah. not cheap you know, to go up to those tiers and that's the thing about you know, what's affordable you know, which which area which tier whether rec or medicinal you know, it's just sometimes about those deals and about that price point and that's true I mean, rosin can be expensive that... rosin oh, can be expensive i know there's some people that buy that shit for less, like 180 dollars for like two grams just about if you're buying shit from like comes out of california or whatnot but down here there's so many other companies i feel like that have been making rosin that now it's 
Who are those the people paying 180 for two grams out of Cali? <laughs> <laughs> Some, crazy. Some crazy people, bro. Really know who That's are. just like... <laughs> I got you, fella. This is satire, folks. It's a lot of money for sure. And it's... For me, I'm like, fuck. I love getting stuff that's nice and like bougie, but... I'm like, fuck, man. Like, I make music. I can't be spending my money on like, yeah. all that shit all the time. Like, I'm still like, I'm a stoner at heart, bro. Like, I fucking, I haven't done anything with it, but I still got like a little container of like some fucking, some reclaim, you know, I'm like, gotta oh. make some cookies out of this or some oh. shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, gotta where, make some cookies. Where are we going? <laughs> where are we going? <laughs> we going to struggle bus? I've been there. Hey, dude, I, if, it's hey. the end of, if it's the end of the world, like zombie apocalypse tomorrow, then bro, I, it it is, you had some fucking reclaim. <laughs> and culinary, and culinary school. <laughs> In culinary school, we didn't have no money, and uh, we'd get a we get a small slab and stuff. And when that was gone, the I world wasn't that. ending, but it, for us sure, it was. Like- um, so awesome, appreciate that. We're gonna jump into the next section. Fifth Tales is all about uh, psychedelic experiences, information, all sorts of stuff going on, especially nowadays with psychedelics, just trying to get it more out there. I feel like it's definitely becoming a little bit more thought of like, as medicinal or like seen that way. It's always been that way. I know that a lot of um, there's like some veterans that use rooms or whatnot to be able to help with like PTSD or just people that have PTSD in general to Hi. are able to use it. And so it helps like a <laughs> Hi, lot. Man. Yeah, because you are a veteran, right? I, mean, I, know I, that. Yeah. I trip every week. Hi. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is what I use it for. And yeah, my yeah. life's a little crazy. <laughs> um, of course, I've well, I've done I've done psychedelics. I've done acid um, shrooms. Love acid. Um, I think I like shrooms a little bit more. Acid can get wild though, for I, sure. I feel the opposite way, but I love hearing everybody's uh, perspective. <laughs> perspective? I think I put an extra P in there. Um, anyway, go ahead. I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, fuck. I, I don't know. I guess I, I'd, I'd have to do, you know what? I'm going to do acid again, and then I'll get back to you. Because <laughs> I I, I've done shrooms in the last couple of months, but I haven't done acid in years. Oh. I'm not quite sure. But when I did shrooms the last do time, it. it was actually kind of like different. I don't know. Since I've grown, I feel like drugs for me have like has changed. Uh, I'm a lot, especially because I write music and shit, like I'm always thinking about like my life, trying to put things into perspective. I'm trying to grow and shit like that. So last time I did shrooms, I was like really in my head, really started thinking about my life, a lot of shit that has happened in like the last year or so. So it was kind of like a really weird experience because when i was younger i would trip and i just like oh fuck like this is awesome i'd be hanging out with friends and shit go Mm -hmm. out and hiking go out in in the wild and be out places like at the lake and shit like that so it wasn't really a whole lot of time to like about self and also when you're younger you're not putting shit into perspective you're just having fun you know know. i was it was uh it was a different experience for me for sure it wasn't bad but it was different for sure and it was like good for me because like i came out of the trip I was just kind of like, yo, there's like some shit in my life that I feel like I need to work through some shit that I'm like, that I'm feeling. You know? Yeah, I was just talking to some people about that, that kind of when you come down and everything, even if it's like some sort of scary trip, it's like uh, it's like going to see a scary movie, right? Okay. You get scared shitless, but you like after it's over, you're like, at least that's not my life. <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. oh, and you get in your car and you go, oh, man, that was fucking crazy, right? And you're yeah. like, oh, fuck. Look at my life. Oh, <laughs> you start feeling better about yourself and Talk stuff. Really, that's absolutely. really what the uh, and that and that's how I feel about any psychedelic trip that I've ever had. I've been scared shitless. Oh, I've sure, been yeah. I've been scared to just like I at one point in time I curled up. Uh, I made a a shroom uh, milkshake and I let it sit. I didn't know that if you let it sit and like milk and stuff like that, it'll just it'll like release all this shit. Damn, I so didn't know that. Str- that's crazy. It gets stronger. It's weird. And it's like sometimes like with uh, with a tea, like people use teas, right? That that's effective. <laughs> but a cold extraction works way better, way stronger. That's crazy. And I drank that and put myself in my bed going, it's just a drug is going to wear off. It's just a drug. <laughs> like, I think it gave me uh, I was like, I'm like, I'm in a hospital. <laughs> I think because in really, my apartment, I didn't have anything yeah. on the walls at the time. So I'm like, sterile feeling. I'm in a hospital. Yeah. I want out. 
Right. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, go lay down, bro. <laughs> you were in your own place. That's fucking so funny. I think yeah. the only time I've ever had that like of experience where I was like, fuck, I'm not enjoying this is like whenever I did like Molly, I was like at a fucking rave and some dude came up to me in a fucking collared shirt. Don't ever buy fucking Molly from a dude in a collared shirt. Mm. Fucking sure. wearing I khaki. Should. No, he was. He was wearing fucking khaki shorts too. Which sure. He was wearing khakis. Yeah. Don't ever do it, guys. <laughs> that was uh, a weird. That was a weird experience. But I think that was the only time I'm like, fuck, I'm not enjoying this. And then later on, then I was like, fuck, I started enjoying myself a little bit more. But like with any with any type of psychedelics, I've definitely had like a really good time. I eventually it's have been, a good time. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> it's kind of like getting there can definitely be a while too. Like, I know that my brother, like, whenever we've done psychedelics together, like it's crazy, like we went to fucking Coons Bluff out here and we were doing fucking psychedelics and we were just I was like staring up at the fucking moon and I was like watching it just like swallow itself and I was like it's that crazy makes as fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully it does no I take a lot of psychedelics I'm like yep alright I'm right there and so like <laughs> he fucking comes up to me and he's just like hey man he's like, can we get the fuck and we were sitting up on the on the bluff and shit like this and he was like hey man can we get the fuck off this hill and yeah. I was like for sure bro and anytime anyone comes up that to sounds me, they're like, like we gotta go if, if someone's like not having a good time I'm not like oh bro like, so, like gonna talk them out of like not having a good time I'm it's like, fuck it. Work. Like, yeah, I'm like, right. all right, let's go. Like, whatever you want to do, like, That's we can the right do it way. and shit. And so I'm like, hey, I was like, everyone, so unless like, they want to like, get off the fucking hill, somebody. we're getting off. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, Set limits. I got off the hill and shit, but I was like, what happened, bro? And he's like, yo, man, that whole fucking cliff just turned into bodies. And I was like, oh, Whoa. yep, gotta go. I was like, that wasn't chill. He was just like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, every time I do shit, bro, he's like, it's just the getting to the good part that's like not cool. And he's like, but after a little bit, he's like, start having a good time. And I'm like, all right, for sure. I'm like yeah. everyone's everyone's road mm-hmm. is a little bit different. You know, this is why fuck. I don't trip with people. Well, it's my... just like everyone has like it's it's the tangent. It's it's thought tangents. It's the thought of tangent. That's where I've noticed is why like, you start tripping is like the tangent. My I don't know the thoughts where your fucking I don't know, where your thoughts will fucking go and shit like that. And, like, but they can trail off too and shit run, like that. Yeah. I'm fucking high guys. I, no, I you're like, no, no, right no. It makes total yeah. sense because <laughs> that's that's how I feel. Like I feel like I've tripped with people and then I've tripped alone. And I feel like sometimes when you do trip with somebody else, it's nice because you can stop those thought tangents and then they can bring you back a little bit of like a grounding yeah, experience of like right, you know, <laughs> we're good, we're good, you good, I'm good, and good you get right that now. reassurance a little bit. But yeah, yeah, when you when you need that personal journey, you need to learn something from that trip. I think that you know, solo trips are, are definitely the best. But I did have a fact that I wanted to just share with Absolutely. Arizona and the progressiveness that this has happened now is that Arizona has taken historic steps towards passing a psilocybin treatment center bill. Oh, um, really so cool. on June 15th, Arizona state legislature passed SB 1570 so that those listening can look this up. That would create a system for legal psilocybin treatment in the state. The Arizona House of Representatives voted decisively in favor of the bill, which, if signed into law by Governor Hobbs, will make Arizona only the third state in the United States to allow for psychedelic treatment. So that is really exciting for our state to be a part of this progressive movement of the research that can be done. That is really cool. Absolutely. And if you also look up, that's great. Because not everybody is meant for ketamine. Ketamine, there are therapy, therapy. What do you? I don't know. Clinics, yeah, set up already around here. But I like that they're doing psilocybin stuff now too. That's cool. I'm yeah. like I'm glad we're expanding. I've been talking to a lot of people as I've been doing driving, doing rides and whatnot for people, and uh, a lot of people are optimistic about the. The mental health aspect of psychedelics, a lot of people ask a lot of questions mm-hmm. are like, what, what about this and this and this and stuff? So yeah. I'm, I, I'm glad that that that's that's encouraging for me yeah. that people are trying to seek out that information. Definitely. I know that there's like a lot of shamans that do psychedelics as well, which is which is really cool to think about, like then the culture of like all that and shit like that. And I have a buddy that I like work with and whatnot, but his cousins are actually like shamans and they that's do crazy. psychedelics and different types of stuff and whatnot. When I, ever since I was a little kid, like in my head, I'm like, I want to be a shaman. I don't know because I don't like, my, my <laughs> grandpa, so my, cool. my, well, my grandpa used to take me to powwows. All, okay. Uh, that's when, cool. Okay. And, all the time. And I was just, I loved it. You know, I was a kid. I didn't know any different uh, that I was a white kid at the, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, everyone was just having a good time and all that kind of stuff. And I learned a lot of different history and stuff like that. that so really that was cool. really dope. But Yeah. Like, Grandpa's gonna be fucking badass, dude. To be honest. Hell yeah, and all this stuff, all the Kachina dolls and all sorts of crazy. <laughs> the Kachina dolls. The Kachina dolls. They they would have different doll stuff with yeah. different dancers mm-hmm. and stuff. Hell yeah, it's fire. Yeah, the sacred. Out. Yeah. 
Yeah. So when I when I would see like shaman stuff or anything, I would relate all that to all those good feelings. I'm like, man, and that guy's actually healing people and stuff like that. That's and cool. That, yeah. It's like, I was like, ooh, I want to do that. And I never knew what that was. <laughs> and maybe just, one day I can be that. I just I would have to dedicate my time to that. Right now we're doing a podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's so yeah. funny. Yeah. <laughs> like on a, a side note, journey. I might have to start doing that shit. But no, that's cool because you said that you would do that like when you were a kid, right? And it's and you didn't really know what it was, but you associated like what you saw, like what with what it was making you feel, and you were like, "Yo, I want to start doing something like that." Like I think that that's really cool. Yeah, I, just, I think that I that's just a saw more... everybody caring more about how they made people feel than how how they felt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's sick. Awesome. All right. And we're going to go ahead and jump into our break. I think this is our first uh, commercial for the uh, sponsor. Do we? Commercial. We'll be right back after these messages. He said we went to Amsterdam and we finally made it out of all the uh, roundabouts. You navigated. We made it. We were very high on shrooms. It was very hard to leave. (laughs) Mental health is wealth is all about, obviously, mental health. And everybody struggles with that, especially nowadays with all the craziness going on. We have aliens. We have not going to go into all the other stuff that we have coming up because it's polarizing. But we have aliens, um, (laughs) AI, jobs, all that shit coming it's going real crazy. leaving i think it's just going to be the time of the creatives you're just going to have time to do stuff and, and create stuff and if people like it they're going to buy it if not you're just going to have like a universal basic income I think. it's a big it's a big wave of the creatives i'm hoping to hop on that train guys just, if just you guys keep don't doing. follow me go hop on yattering yo yattering Whoop. spotify follow me on yeah. instagram and all that shit follow the tag uh, yeah. we'll do more promo here in a little bit it was one of the big things that I try to get people to help out with is if you have any coping skills, mechanisms, whatnot, that because uh, like myself, I like I clean and do like math and different things because I can control those when I'm upset. I feel that I can't oh, yeah, control okay. what I'm upset about. And uh, that reminds me like, hey, we can control this and it removes me from that situation. I can look at it objectively instead of subjectively. I think that's cool that you use math as like an example of like I use a cope. I've never like heard anyone saying that. So that's really cool, bros. If I ever need any help with like some math questions coming up here, I'm going to make sure I hit you up right, dude. Hell yeah. Yeah. Especially now that I need to get that new Apple thing that they have. It's uh, Apple Notes. You just write out a math problem and it solves it for you. The fuck? You can do it and then you can change it, put parentheses everywhere and different. Wow. What was that when I was filming math? I they're know. Like, they're like, it's going to make everybody stupid. Did the internet do that? There's yeah. stupid people. Yeah. <laughs> but there I was stupid people before. Times, they just, <laughs> they nerfed everything. More of those people are alive. Yeah, fine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, so, no, it's all good. Um, we just started <laughs> talking about that. But no, I think with like a lot of ways with how I cope is writing music um i love to write music um, not only just like right how i got into like writing music was like i like to write um stories um i did like i do a lot of screenwriting short stories um, writing like a little novel and shit like that for fun i think i like to focus like it's for me it's finding something else to like focus my thoughts on as opposed to thinking about the shit that's going on with me because like the shit that i um stress about is like shit going on like, with me and my family um <laughs> shit with like my relationship um, it's, it's trying to being sorry, an adult sorry, can be fucking hard sometimes or being like, even just like living 
it can be fucking hard. The thought of it can be really fucking hard. Mm -hmm. And it's trying to find things that you enjoy that make that make life seem bearable because i even have like kids and shit like that and people will tell me well like oh you you're so lucky you have kids and you you know you you should focus on them and how to raise them and i'm like fuck dude like i'm also trying to focus on like how i need to be happy and like it's sometimes like, that's like, when the I scary get, part yeah, and <laughs> yeah. when i get like really depressed and whatnot i'm mm -hmm. just like how can i teach these these my, my boys how to how to how to be happy when i'm struggling with it myself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when I try to think of like, hey, like I got to get myself out of my head, it's trying to find things to get yourself out of your head. Like I said, like writing, if you, if you can find a hobby, if you feel like you don't have any hobbies and try to get yourself out there, you, you, it's math. That doesn't seem like much of a hobby, but it, it can be um, doing something like that. Um, going out, people do a lot of, I, and I think that too, like working out, I've seen more people now working out than yeah. like yeah. before when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And I think that like, fuck, like working out was like a, a, a trend like it is now. I'd be yeah. so much more fit when oh, I was younger. Cause yeah. like I, before I was like, fuck, I want to have a good time. Mm -hmm. I was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but like, and I think a lot of people use that as also a way to like, to, to handle their depression and shit like that. It's so maybe working out. Oh yeah, that like was that. life changing for me. Yeah. It was the only thing and it is the only thing where I just don't think about anything except getting through that next rep <laughs> or that next mile or that next goal that you're doing in the immediate. But it just, it, it also gives you that um, self-empowered feeling because you accomplish something difficult that you didn't want to do maybe that day. It was hard to pull yourself out of bed or to even fill up your water bottle just to even yeah. Oh, yeah. get yourself out the door to even think about doing it. Yeah, absolutely. But the sense that's of accomplishment cool. is just something that's so motivating. Yeah, on absolutely. that line too, um, I guess one thing that I thought about that I kind of do that like does make me feel really happy that I think yeah. about is like, like changing up like, your life a little bit, one aspect of it or, or whatnot, like doing something a little bit differently. If you feel like you do something every day that you mm -hmm. maybe want to change, then maybe do something different. Like I love beer. I like to, I would go and I collect different types of craft beers and shit like that. But then I'm like drinking like every day mm -hmm. beer and I, I'm already have stomach fucking issues. So I'm like getting bloated and shit like that. And one thing that I decided I wanted to do was like, I want to try to you know, like lose weight a little bit, start getting a little bit more fit and shit like that. Fucking uh, just for myself and not feel so fucking bloated stop drinking beer as much and the one thing that i've also noticed is i'm i'm doing something that i'm like i'm changing something so my yeah. routine's a little bit different mm -hmm. and that started also making me a little bit happier I'm like oh fuck it like i'm not drinking as much and shit like that mm -hmm. like, i'm not an alcoholic like my mom told me this <laughs> but uh, uh the gym so. the gym too yeah. you, the more you push yourself and you hit your goals in there once you're outside the gym and when you're like hungry or tired or something you're like Remember when you were doing that set and you were tired, you still did that shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can, we got this shit. Absolutely. It builds that confidence in you. If you keep doing this stuff, you're just like, like, I need to get back in the gym. But uh, you got, <laughs> you got to keep uh, it. It For me, at least it builds a discipline into, I push myself through this so I can definitely push myself through another hour or two of work. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm not even doing anything physical right now. You got this. And I'm, I'm constantly self-talk. That's the, the best thing that you that I can do for you is take care of me, right? Mm -hmm. The best thing you can do for me is take care of you, right? That's where it starts. And po self positive talk, as I was just dropping someone off earlier today, we we kind of like related on psychosis. Mm -hmm. At one point in time, I was I was in that, and that we uh, also he's wondering is there a way out? And I'm like, yeah, because you got to start you got to start building your reality around yourself. You gotta start self self positive talk starts there, and then then you can build outward because you can't you can't pour from an empty cup. No, yeah, you know, that's true. Uh, one thing that I feel like I don't like since we're talking about mental illness and stuff like that that I wish was like more accessible to people is like therapy, mm -hmm. uh, being able to be yes. able to go out and get counseling and mm -hmm. whatnot uh, because it's good like to be able to go out and talk to people. And, and there's so many people that don't go out and, and, and feel like they can't do that. Cause sometimes it can, it can be hard to talk to your friends. Mm -hmm. um, I've had in the last, uh, in the last year, I, I've had a friend that that's committed suicide and that was really rough. Yeah, and it yeah. kind of puts fuck. in this whole thing of like, fuck, like, I don't know. Like, I think a lot of people too, like, I'm not the only person in my friend's life that thought this way. It was like, what, what could I do to be able to help and stuff like that? Yeah. And I think a lot of it too is like at one point you can't really do anything. 
And that's when it goes into the self life. Check up on people if you care about them, of course. Always try to be there and whatnot. <laughs> if someone you notice, if someone you, is kind of being different, a little bit more distant, you can try to be there as much as you can. But it's also trying to remind yourself you need to go out and talk to people. And I think that a lot of it is people don't find someone to talk to before it's too late. And you're really in that mindset of like, I can't talk to anyone. Just tell, yeah. you, tell your yeah. people it's okay to talk to you. Yeah. I, have, I had someone just hit me up yesterday. They're like, I know you're busy. I'm like, no, I'm not. Not, not for this. I'll talk to you. Let's talk. Yeah. And then uh, they were going through a bad thing or whatever. And, and I'm like, and one person that was telling them a bunch of stuff. And first off, that's all a bunch of bullshit. That's all lies. And I talked them through it and everything like that. I, I'll if you if you need to talk to somebody, hit me up. I'll stop what I'm doing. Oh no, yeah. yeah. Like for the most part, unless I'm doing something like cr- crazy, like in the middle of like driving, I'll find it. I'll find a place to get a hold of you i try to be like that too to be honest um if there's anyone that i know i try to take the time to listen to them and whatnot because i know that me personally like if you're my friend there's been times i've i've called you and like been and just like talk to you about shit that i that's going on in my life um just because like sometimes like really it's just like talking it through just Mm -hmm. like talking it out as opposed to thinking about when you say shit out loud you kind of think about it in an out outward perspective i feel like almost Mm -hmm. like there have been so many times i've been stressed out about something or fucking mad about something and i've talked about it and just like it's not i don't need to be stressing out about this as much as i am right now if there is a way to be able to handle this and i'm sure your music is such a creative release like vocally especially like with your some of your screens and just some like i've seen you perform live you know it's it's pretty you could tell it's therapeutic for you afterwards i'm sure to be able to just get that kind of energy out when I perform, I'm not going to lie, I've never been as high as I've ever been. It's when I'm done doing a show, like when I get off the stage, it literally feels like I'm, I have so much adrenaline pumping, probably endorphins going through. I literally feel like I'm like coming down off of a high, but it's so like natural and it is, it's a lot of fun. And I'm so fucking nervous like, before I get up on the stage like, almost every time too. And there's, I've performed so much, uh, but I, I get so nervous and when I get up there and I start rapping one of my songs or some shit it is it's so much it's so much fun to do and a lot of the things that i write about it's very personal too like when i'm writing i'm not just like oh writing some some nonsense and i'm like oh this is so therapeutic i'm actually writing about stuff that's very personal to me mm-hmm. writing about a relationship that i have with like a girl my girl's mom like i wrote this song right in the labyrinth it literally that song is about the relationship i feel like i have with everyone in my life my kids uh, my girl's uh, my girl, uh, my girl's mom, uh, my mom, my dad. Uh, it's relatable stuff, and it's and and it, and I hope it is relatable. Um, mm-hmm. But at the time when I'm writing it, I'm not. I've, I'm almost like not thinking about like thinking about that. If that right. makes sense, mm-hmm. I'm really no, just kind of thinking about myself. You. No, but make yeah. stuff for you, and then the people. And like that's it, how that's... you help people too. It comes yeah. from a place that is personal, yeah. and then that's where they relate to what's personal for them. And yeah, I'm sure Joe Budden made a song. And his lyrics were pump, pump, pump it up. That's so pump, pump, <laughs> pump it up. Just blaze, but pump, pump it up. Sorry, when, Joe Budden. That's, that's all right. No, it's, <laughs> when you find something that you really love too, that's therapeutic. At me, Joe Budden. I feel like it fucking. Um, yeah. There's been times like where I'm writing a song, and I've actually like I, recently I came out the song Zerg, and that's also a very very personal song. Uh, and I actually like write, while writing it, I cried a little bit, mm-hmm. yeah. and but that was like it was good it's i felt like there. i needed that like i was like being exactly. able to get that those that emotion out and then when i got it out i was like fuck yeah, this is and that to me i was like fuck this is a good song man <laughs> Boom, I was like, this is gonna make mecha- people cry yo Boom, but, yeah. coping mechanism That's unlocked yeah. achievement unlocked it's wild about writing something out too because you think about it now and you're like oh i can type something quick in my notes or i can do something but just the physical act of writing something that personal and writing it down and reading it and it's so different and it oh, is yeah. so therapeutic after the fact i think getting getting there and journaling or doing anything that you know is something related like that it's it's always something that i feel like is just underrated until you actually do it and you're actually able to channel something like that and then you're also like getting a skill too that you felt like you didn't have like if you journal and you're like fuck i'm not a writer like you're acquiring Mm -hmm. like a skill over time and right right creative thing that you start i've learned so much doing this stuff and then like when we create something or whatever, put something out. I don't know. That's one of the big, like, even if we get one view, I don't really care. I'm so high off of being happy Creative with what we've and... created. Oh, yeah. that it's just like, that's all I care about. Like exactly. that, well, that and the people. Yeah. Yeah. Persistence too. And eventually right. like, someone will see it. And it's the, and to me, it's like, 
the right person will see it. Like mm -hmm. if, if thousands of people don't see it or whatever, a lot of the fucking hundred people or the five people that see it, like someone that needed to see it will like see it. And that's if they don't what like matters. It, if they don't right. like it, they weren't your people to begin with. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And that's good for your mental health. All right. So we'll go ahead and uh, jump into the last uh, segment, which is plug talk promo. The last uh, segment, which is plug talk promo. All right, plug talk is all about. We promo. talk about the plugs. But I'm the a, plug. I'm, a <laughs> I'm not the plug, but I'm a refrigerator. I stay cold and plugged in. Though. That's it. You know <laughs> Never give your plug name. My plug's name is Hello. <laughs> How are you? What do you have? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, it's the dispo right now. That's it. Yeah, that's even. <laughs> Whatever you have, what do you have going on? If uh, they can reach you at uh, Instagram at. Oh, yeah. So it's going to be uh, yattering underscore. You'll type in yattering. It's going to be Y A T T E R I N G. I'm going to be the stick figure throwing up. That's my figure. Yeah. Because I did a lot of drinking. I don't do it as much anymore. It could also be word vomit. You know? That's what it is. Uh, I'm holding a bottle that gives me words that's wisdom yes. anyway you're I just know. drinking the wisdom but, <laughs> but yeah, yattering and then uh, again you can find me on spotify is yattering which is cool um, i'm also on youtube is yattering official soundcloud for all you kids that still fucking listen to soundcloud because i know that that shit's out there still nice. but yeah so i'm i'm trying to be out there i put all my music on fucking distro kid and that's like <laughs> that's the plug for the music and they basically put all my shit down on Spotify and everything for me so I don't have to go through them to do it. It's a pretty easy process. Oh, if I have a problem, enough. I'll hit up like DistroKid and then they'll tell me to hit up Spotify and then I'll hit up Spotify and then they'll help, tell me to hit up DistroKid and, and eventually it'll get it'll get worked out. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, did, I have uh, the Spotify for podcasters. That's what I do. Hell yeah, um, it's sick. It's, it's an app. Anybody can get it. It's not like... Mine's a, oh, that's neat. Yeah, it's a Spotify that. for artist one. Well, we have to sit down and go over a lot of bread. I know. I have uh, programs. <laughs> You're good apps. at those apps. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just like, do I really need it? Oh, well. No, no, okay. I want it. I want it. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to teach some of the stuff that I've learned, but it is a pain in the ass. I don't like, thank God for um, psychedelics because it helped rewire some of the brain and helped me learn some new things. It's, taught this old dog some new tricks that's it man hey, pay attention <laughs> we'll tell puppy learned how to putt. what we, we want to talk a little bit real quick about what we have going on for the future with the podcast we are going this is going to be the last live that we're going to do on sundays we're going to start recording it and we will be doing the live premieres still um, yourself you we have a live premiere can you do monday tuesday or wednesday night at like five or six or seven, um, six, seven. I'm good. I'm good Tuesdays or Wednesdays, to be honest. I'm Tuesdays. off those days. Whatever day, whatever day you want to run it up, just let me know. Tuesday at six would work good. Tuesday at Tuesday six. Tuesday at six works Tuesday good. Yeah, I don't think okay. I got shit going on. We're going to start doing uh, our premieres Tuesdays and Wednesdays, okay. Tuesday and Wednesday nights, uh, schedule permitting with, with the guests, whatnot. Mm -hmm. That way we have time to edit some stuff. I'm going to yeah. try to throw some extra stuff in there. I may even try to put captions throughout the whole thing nice. but just regular ones not our our uh, fancy our fancy slimy ones slimy ones the, <laughs> okay. I just, nickelodeon slime that's all i thought of or like surge that's cool though but it know, goes with, like, it plays with off the, of the drip yeah, of the, well, it goes yeah. with the whole thing that we were talking about like nostalgia the mm -hmm. 90s and shit like that it's that's it look dude at. the fucking there's slime a reason fest, maybe i always wanted there's to go a, to those when i was a kid there's a there's a method don't make fun of me because I did meth before. There's a method to my madness. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, meth. I do a lot of like, <laughs> angry songs, but if Yattering could ever like, go to like, one of those Nickelodeon festivals and be included in the oh, song. Let's stop sick, talking you know about saying? Nickelodeon, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, God. Oh, God. Completely unrelated. No, no, no. Psychedelics. Back to Back, anyway, back so to listen to let's more go of ahead. Music. So Tuesday, <laughs> 6 p.m. for for your for, for yattering, but then we're gonna do that. What else were we? Lives. But we will we will have it for those who want like an uncut version. Mm -hmm. We'll start putting that on our Patreon 
uh, Patreon's on our link tree. I'll put it up on, uh, uh, I, I can't think right now, Instagram. Mm-hmm. I wanted to say every other program. <laughs> we'll put it in the uh, story and stuff like that to, if you want to check it out. As of right now, I believe it's set up for a dollar. I think we're going to change that to $5 mm-hmm. if you want to check out the unedited version and whatnot behind the scenes behind the scenes we're gonna start throwing more stuff special stuff uh, like event videos and stuff in there as well maybe once we get that going things things are things are happening here slowly <laughs> but i do want to shout out rj shroomery is one of the first sponsors make sure to go check them out on instagram at r j s s h r o o m e r y just rewind that and play it again. You win. You yeah. win the spelling bee. <laughs> hey, what do I win? Pineapple drink. Great. Then we move on to uh, Pharma Stop. I did I have the gummy bag? Yes. I I ate them all <laughs> while I was tripping, but these work very well. So good. These CBD gummies uh, from Pharma Stop. It's two thousand milligrams. I ate them all when I was tripping. Um, it helped settle my stomach. It helped kill that uh, that anxiety of the come up. It was great. Make sure you have CBD when you trip. That's amazing. Other, you can throw it in your tea with the tincture. That works really well. But also this balm is amazing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't smell. It, does, it it You may have to keep it's Arizona right now, so you may have to keep Texture's it cool. Texture's not oily either. No. And I had a dry spot right here, and you can't see it, but it, it I only used it once, and it's not dry anymore. Yeah, so it really absorbs. It really absorbs. It works really well. It's fast. It helped my thumb out, too. My thumb was really dry. Not nice. anymore. And it's natural. Pharma stop that they can use the healing chefs for 30% off. That is there. Save you some money. Stuff that works. Doesn't smell. I don't know what? What do you, what do you, what do you want? It's Good soy stuff. free. No soy boy stuff. Or I don't know <laughs> if that's a Good digestible thing. ingredient. Yeah. But yeah, it's just stuff. Uh, Pharmastop.us, use the code the healing chefs, all one word for 30% off. The healing chefs, all one word, 30% off. I want to thank everybody, all our supporters. I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank uh, Betty. I want to thank Yattering. Yeah, thanks for having you. me out, guys. Appreciate thank you guys you so much. much. Yeah. It's good seeing you. Always. Oh, good being out here. We'll, oh, yeah. It was good. We'll, yeah, yeah, it was nice. we'll, stay, we'll stay tapped in. Uh, shout out Habari Entertainment. If you are looking to be a uh, sponsor, check us out at www.thehealingchefpodcast.com. Again, www. That's World Wide Web. (laughs) Thehealingchefspodcast.com. And you can check out the sponsors there, Pharma Stop and RJ Shroomery. And you could be one as well. Just hit the DMs. We have a packet ready for you. A lot of cool things coming in the future. Tap in, smoke up, trip out. We love you all. We're out of here. Later, y'all. Oh, son of a bitty, bitty, uh, son of a bitty, bitty, son of a bitty, 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 uh, gun. <laughs> you thought I was going to say uh, son of a bitch, didn't you? <laughs>